All right, so let's kick things off. Let's start nice and easy with table transformations. Now, if you go to the query editor, look in the home tab, you'll see all sorts of basic table transformation options. Let's talk through some of the most important ones. First off, you can choose to keep or remove certain columns or rows from your table. And there are a few interesting options here. Looking at the columns options, you can either select the column that you'd like to remove or select the column that you'd like to keep. Now that might not seem like a really important distinction, but it can be really helpful in certain cases. So let's say you've got a data connection to a table that might have a variable number of columns. One month it might have 10, the next month it might have 20, but at the end of the day, you always wanna land with the same set of five columns. If you were to open up the query editor and manually remove each of the columns that you don't want, then any new columns that appear won't be accounted for and will end up in your final table, which you don't want. On the other hand, if you select the five that you always want and you say, hey, Power BI, these are the five columns I need. Anything else that you find in the table, remove it, then you'll be good to go moving forward. So it's a bit of a nuance, but actually a really helpful tool when you need to do something like that. As far as the rows are concerned, you've got some basic options here. Remove the top rows or bottom rows. You can set a specific number of rows to keep or remove. Uh, this is really helpful if you have files that might have header rows or footers or grand totals that you need to strip out. Other options here, you can remove alternate rows or you can remove duplicates. And that can be a great way to actually create new lookup tables from scratch by creating unique lists of IDs, for example. You'll also find some basic sorting options, A to Z, low to high, etc., as well as options to change your data types or promote your header rows. Now, Power BI is pretty smart about headers. By default, it should identify and promote those header rows for you, but in case it doesn't, you can always do that manually using this tool here. And then last thing to call out, if you right click any column header, you can access a lot of these same common tools, plus do things like duplicate, move, or rename columns. And this is a common theme that we'll see time and time again as we work with the query editor, which is that the same tools are often available in multiple places, multiple menus, multiple tabs, sometimes even multiple views within the Power BI file. So with that, let's open up a brand new workbook and connect to our first data source. All right, so I've opened up a new blank Power BI file. Go ahead and do the same and make sure that you follow along carefully with what I'm about to demonstrate because what we're doing is actually connecting to the source files that we're gonna to use to build our project throughout the course. So as you work through these demos and through the homework exercises, you'll be building up all of the pieces that we'll need to assemble into our final project by the end of the course. So let's get started by clicking on the Get Data dropdown. This allows me to access the most common options. In this case, we want a text or CSV file. And what I've done here is create a folder called Power BI Course Files on my desktop. And then within that, I've added a new folder called AdventureWorks. And this is where I've saved all 10 of those CSV files that are available for download as part of the course. So in this case, the file we wanna work with first is AdventureWorks underscore products. So go ahead and double click to open that one up. Now, as soon as you've selected a file, the first view that you'll see is this preview window. And this has a couple options worth paying attention to. It will automatically detect the file origin as well as any delimiter in place. In this case, comma is correct since this is a CSV file. And then this data detection dropdown basically says, okay, do you want Power BI to take a little sneak peek at your data and take a guess at what these data types should be? If so, do you want it to base that guess on the first 200 rows? Do you want it to be based on the entire data set? Or should we not detect data types at all? In which case you can manually add those data types to your columns in the query editor. So by default, let's just keep it on the first 200 rows. Usually it does a pretty good job detecting the correct data types. And now from here, you can just load straight into your workbook. You can bypass the query editor entirely. As a best practice, I would recommend against doing that. Even if you don't think you'll need to make any sort of transformation to your data, launching the query editor is a great way to just QA, and make sure things look good. So let's go ahead and hit edit, which will open up the query editor. 
All right, so here we are, we're in our query editor. We've got our one lonely query here, AdventureWorks underscore product, which you can see has been named based on the file name itself. The same name has been applied to the table, AdventureWorks product. And take a look at this. There are already three applied steps that have been made. And all we did was double click on the file. We haven't done anything else. So let's actually click back through and see what Power BI has done here. And if we expand this formula bar so we can see the M code, we'll get a sense of what's really going on here. So the first step, the source step, this will always happen. And this is just Power BI saying, okay, let's go find the file location and let's pull it in. In this case, we're looking at a path on my C drive and it's finding the folder on my desktop and grabbing the AdventureWorks products CSV file. Now, I think this goes without saying, but your path will look different unless your name is also Chris and you've created the same exact file on your desktop. So that's step one, the source, which makes sense. But look at the preview here. Notice how we've got these empty placeholder column headers and then our first row contains the actual column headers. So the next applied step, as you may have guessed, identifies, it detects those headers and promotes them to the first row. And then from there, the third step looks like it's just changing some data types based on the detection that we talked about in the preview window. So jumping back and forth, you can see it's changed some text strings into whole numbers, numerical values, which looks good. So that's pretty cool. Power BI has already done quite a bit to help clean up this data set for us. And now from here, there are always two steps that I start with in the query editor. Every time I connect to data, every time I load up a table, I start with these two steps. Step one is updating my table name. So let's go ahead and select this and update it to aw underscore product underscore lookup. And I'll tell you more about why I'm using lookup in the table name once we get to the data modeling 101 section. But that should do the trick. AW product lookup. I can press enter to lock that in. And the second step that I always take in the query editor is to scroll through my column headers and make sure my data types and column headers look good. So let's go ahead and just collapse this formula bar. We've got product key, which is integers, We've got subcategory key and then a whole bunch of text fields. Product SKU, name, model name, product description, the color, the size, the style, and then two more numerical fields here, the cost and the product price, which are decimal values. Now we could update these last two to currency or fixed decimal numbers, but I'm gonna show you how to do that in a separate place later on. So don't worry about these two just yet. Now things look pretty good here. I don't really need to do much to this table at this point, it's pretty clean. But let's say we don't really want the product size column. It's kind of messy, you know, we've got a mix of numerical sizes as well as text-based sizes like large, medium, small. So let's just remove this column. And like I mentioned on the slide, there are a couple ways to do it. I can either use the remove columns option here in the home tab, or I can right click the column header itself and click remove. And when I do that, it's added a new applied step and removed that column. So that's just about all that I need to do here as far as transforming this table is concerned. If I wanted to, it looks like my product keys are sorted low to high, but if we wanted to make sure, we could go ahead and use the sorting options to do that here. And I think that just about does it. So we've applied some table transformations to our product table. We've given it a meaningful name and we've confirmed that the data types and column headers look good. So all that's left to do is press this close and apply button and it will go ahead and load it into our file. So now we can see on the right side in our fields list in the report view, we've got this AW product lookup table with all the fields listed out. You'll also see it in the data view. Here we go, the same table, same fields. And last but not least, it will appear as a new object right here in our relationships view as well. So congratulations, we just created our first data connection in our workbook. Why don't you go ahead and save this workbook. I'm gonna call it AdventureWorks underscore report. You can name it whatever you want. And this is a Power BI file.pbix extension. Press save. 
and you are good to go.